If we rewind 25 years, the Ford Focus really rewrote the rule book on what a family car could, should, or would feel like to drive, and it just put the fun back into driving. The Ford Focus for a very long time was one of the company's best sellers and in fact alongside the Fiesta it often crept into the top three sellers here in the UK but that hasn't happened since 2017. The humble hatchback has given way to the SUV and now it's cars like Puma and Cougar that are stealing the headlines. So sounds like it's game over for the Focus. But this one's been given a mid-life overhaul to keep it competitive and fend off those pesky SUVs. So if you give this video a quick like and subscribe to the Car Buyer YouTube channel, I'll tell you all you need to know. This generation of Ford Focus went on sale in 2018, dramatically diluted both in terms of style and desirability from the quirky, fun, first-generation car, the Mark IV model was altogether more sensible, practical and, well, easier to live with. And for its facelift, four years after its launch, Ford has gifted the Focus a subtle new look new lights front and rear and they've moved the badge from just in front of the bonnet to the middle of this new more rounded grille it's not quite the blink and you'll miss it facelift we often see but the visual changes are hardly groundbreaking the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice this isn't the normal hatchback this is the estate it's also the slightly jacked up suv like active model so it gets a raised ride height some extra drive modes and some plastic cladding but both the estate and the active bits were available before in here is where you'll find the biggest updates if you don't go for the entry level trend and go for the active titanium or st line cars you see the trend sticks with the old eight inch touchscreen which runs off the old sync 3 software whereas this one is 13.2 inches and runs off the new sync 4. i mean looking at the car it does look as though it's just been plonked on there doesn't it just been plonked on the dash as a bit of an afterthought but look, it's a massive step forward for Ford and it's a really good system. But there is no escaping the fact that it looks as though the car was designed before touchscreens were even a thing. All the main controls are within the screen, but you do get all of these shortcuts along the bottom there, apart from the volume there, which is a big old physical button. You get a fixed lower bar on the screen all the time for climate control stuff and you can adjust the temperature with a click and a push of that bar there. Personally, I'd prefer physical buttons and switches, but it's a large space, so you don't often feel like you're pressing things and ending up with something else. So overall, it's a real step forward for Ford. Moving away from tech and onto general quality, well, it's not luxurious, but it's practical and it's functional. It's a family car, remember? But if you're thinking about price points, 35 grand, well, you can get an awful lot of Audi for your money. But this is the active Vignale spec, so you get some plusher materials, although there are still hard plastics on the door and on the centre console. There are currently four main trims to choose from, Trend, Titanium, Active and ST-Line. We'd avoid trend, it misses out on some pretty key features such as that new infotainment system and even alloy wheels. Titanium is definitely worth the extra, adding both of those things plus keyless entry and start amongst other things. Active gives a more rugged appearance but little actual off-road ability, while ST-Line is the sportiest looking of the lot. Well, apart from the fire-breathing ST-Hot hatchback. You can add the Vignale pack to titanium, active and ST-Line cars, bringing some posher trim as well as digital dials and a better stereo. For a full rundown and our six-point written review, just search for Ford Focus on carbuyer.co.uk. If we rewind 25 years, the Ford Focus really rewrote the rule book on what a family car could, should or would feel like to drive and it just put the fun back into driving. Even if it was nipping to the local shops or doing the school run, it was just a fantastic little thing. And all right, the Focus has got a bit more sensible over the years, if I'm being honest, but it's still one of the more engaging cars in its class, 
Do you know what? I think this car actually puts a lot of tall SUVs to shame. There's a lot of grip and direction changes stay tidy. So look, the automatic gearbox and the taller active trim wouldn't necessarily be our choice. The lower standard cars are just that little bit more fun to drive, but this car is still so joyful. And I think after all this time, Ford still knows how to put a smile on your face. In terms of engines, there are petrols and diesels. The petrols are all one litre, three cylinders, while the single diesel is a four cylinder with 118 brake horsepower. Should you want to drive like the seat of your pants are on fire, you'll need to pick the rapid 276 horsepower Ford Focus ST. Now that's a proper piece of me. But the car we've got here is the more powerful of the two normal petrols. It has 153 horsepower and whilst it is a bit rough sounding, the power delivery is nice and linear and quite quick when you want it to be. 0 to 62 miles an hour takes 8.6 seconds. But you might be wondering where the plug-in hybrid or fully electric Ford Focus is. Well, there isn't one. Yes, rivals like the Peugeot 308 and Vauxhall Astra are both now offering with a plug, but Ford, despite offering this tech on the larger Cougar, refuses to sell an electrified Focus. If you want a pure electric Ford, your sole option is the Mustang Mach-E. And yet, if that doesn't matter to you, the Focus is still a really smart bit of kit. It's quiet, comfortable, and I'm doing about 48 mpg, which isn't far off the 50.4 mpg that Ford quotes in the brochure. But for some, that won't matter because it still functions really well as a family car. So we've got the estate version here, so you get the bigger boot, taller roof line and the like but even in the standard car you get around 375 litres which is about what you get in a Seat Leon or a Volkswagen Golf but here in the estate we've got around 608 litres to play with and not only that this is really clever Ford have looked to Skoda for some of their simply clever touches this lifts up creates a divider and this is what they call the wet zone. So you can chuck in your welly boots, wet clothes in the back there, and it doesn't mess up the rest of the car. It's the little things, right? Fold the seats down and that 608 litre boot expands to 1,650 litres. And better still, you don't have to stretch across the load area as there are useful levers within easy reach. That's less of an issue in the hatch, of course, as the boot isn't as deep. All folded, the hatch offers 1,354 litres in total. It's good news in the rear seats too. When this version launched pre-facelift back in 2018, it was elevated from a cramped, claustrophobic and compromised car to one of the more spacious in its class. And nothing's changed. Obviously, estate car caveats apply, but even in the standard version, there's enough space for six footers to get comfortable. There's no climate controls in the back, but there's nets on the back of the seats and there's pockets in the doors, windows are nice and big. I mean, it's way better than the latest Peugeot 308, so thumbs up. Right then, that just about winds things up. Shall we summarise with some deal makers and deal breakers for this new Ford Focus? The Ford Focus might not offer the style of an SUV, but it's better to drive than almost every single one of them. It's roomy too. That's especially true of this estate model, but even the hatch offers space for the family. And then there's the tech. It's miles better than what went before, and for many, will be the main reason to choose one of these over the pre-facelift car. On the flip side, the engine range isn't much cop. This petrol is fine, but there's no plug-in hybrid or electric option for now. In terms of luxury feel and interior layout, the Focus falls behind premium rivals like the Mercedes A-Class, which isn't likely to cost much more on a monthly finance deal. 25 years is a long time and it feels like Ford has finally almost, almost come full circle with the Ford Focus. The original was such a game changer and it finally feels like this car has got some of that magic. It comes with the latest tech engines aside, good to drive and it's just a really useful, usable family car. So if you're not swayed by the huge range of SUVs on sale, this could be a great bet. 
If you like this video, then check out our review of the Peugeot 308 and our family cars playlist. Thanks for watching.